Forget the bank. These four places will make you way more money. So let's go. Good day, good day, good day. Sammy I can win here. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys four alternatives to traditional banking, which are going to make you way more money. Now, in order to get straight into this video, I wanna share with you how I ended up in a space where I understood that these four alternatives were way better than the bank. And for me, it started with, well, many of you know that I celebrated my 18th birthday in prison. Now, the way that came around is literally because from the age of 13, I got involved in a whole bunch of crime and stuff, which was all associated with me wanting more money. Now, I don't blame anyone for my actions. I made bad decisions, but that's kind of the byproduct of growing up in a low income area. Now, the interesting thing is growing up in a low income area, one of the big things for me is I just wanted to be able to decide the kind of shoes I wore to school. I didn't want to wear the kind of shoes that my mom and dad thought were the shoes I should have when there were other shoes like hush puppies that I actually wanted to have. But there were other things, like I wanted to go on holiday. I remember seeing other students who would go on holiday year in, year out. And I used to ask myself, how comes I've never gone on a holiday with my mom and my dad? But the reality is now I'm an adult, I look back and I see that there were actually deeper issues that were going on with me as a child. Like, for example, I really wanted just to be able to make my own choices. And now as an adult, I see many adults who also just want to make their own choices. And side by side with making my own choices, I wanted to be the kind of person who was able to make decisions that would be of value to me, be of value to me and those who were associated with me. So those were the real things on the inside that I actually wanted to achieve as a young boy, which caused me to go and follow the wrong path, go astray and start doing the wrong things. Now, the reality for me was, the reason I did all that is because there were barriers in front of me. Now, those primary barriers effectively were finances, and those finances affected my flexibility. Now, the reality is if you have, you know, stringent finances, if you're not able to do what you want to do with your money, then that's going to limit and reduce your flexibility. Some of you have probably seen in the Bible, there's a powerful verse. It says, money answereth all things. Now, this is not me giving you the interpretation, but this is just one of the applications for you guys to understand that if you don't have your money in order, you're not gonna have your flexibility in order. And when your finances aren't in order, your flexibility is not in order, that ultimately affects your freedom. That was kind of the situation I was in growing up. And I used to ask myself this question and it was, why can't I just get ahead, okay? Now I've since met multiple property investment clients who have portfolios of four or five properties and they always say to me that same question in different ways. Samuel, why can't I just get ahead? I've got four properties, like I should be making enough money to replace my income. And I always think to myself, well, the reason you aren't is because you haven't done it the right way. You know, having four properties doesn't make you rich. It's just like saying, if you drive a Bentley, you're automatically wealthy. It doesn't work like that. And what happened for me to change all of this, which is how I started to discover these four alternatives to using a traditional bank, was I came across some training from a guy named Jay Morrison. Now, those of you who are in the property space, you may know of Jay Morrison, who's Mr. Real Estate. He's an American property investor who teaches people how to literally become financially free. And he's got a great book and a great set of resources. So I highly recommend him. And one of the things that I learned from Jay Morrison is what he calls the money problem. Now, this video isn't a video about the money problem, but if that's something you guys are interested in, then let me know in the comments below and then we will look at how we can do that. So once I discovered the money problem, I started to realize why I couldn't get ahead. I started to realize that the reason I couldn't get ahead because my whole plan was, after, especially after coming out of prison, was to make money legitimately and store it in a bank which is effectively what we call save, okay? I wanted to save up. I wanted to get into saving. I wanted to start saving my money. Now, here's the interesting thing. When you start saving your money, you very quickly start to realize that you don't get much for your savings from the bank. And this is something that for many of us, unfortunately, we don't think much deeper about. We don't maybe take a second thought about and say, well, how could we make way more money than we are currently making from the bank? Now, I wanna share something with you guys so you guys understand exactly how my mind shifted around this ideology. You see, because for me, my mind started to shift around this ideology when I started to realize that I wanna look at my money 
just like soldiers. Most of you know I'm a big reader of the Bible. So in the Bible, you see that when soldiers go out to war, they literally, when they win, bring back whatever is the spoils. Now, most of the time, the spoils might be additional treasure. Sometimes the spoil might be captives that they've captured. And the reality with that is the money goes and brings back more money. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why is this important? Well, the reason it's important is because traditionally in banks, when a bank is paying you a 0.01% interest on your money, you're putting 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 pounds in a bank and a bank is giving you one P, one pound, you know, less than 10 pounds for your hard earned revenue. Now, the reason why this is so interesting is because the money is rotting in the bank, okay? Or if you use my soldier analogy, if you like that, your money is being murdered in the bank, okay? And some of you might be thinking, well, Samuel, my money's not really being murdered. How is it being murdered? I get the same amount that I put in. And that's not actually the truth. So let me break down a very simple example for you, okay? If you put 100 pounds in the bank at the start of a year, and based on the rate of inflation, and for those of you who don't know what inflation is, inflation is the rate or the speed at which your money gets weaker, okay? So what happens is you put 100 pounds in a bank at the start of a year. The rate of inflation, they say, is minus 3% per year, okay? But the reality is if you go and do some more in-depth study, I don't want to scare anyone, but you will find out that it's actually more than minus three, okay? Or maybe less is actually the actual mathematical term. Considering I used to be a math teacher, I should get that right. But it's actually less than minus three. It's a greater number than negative three, okay? So what generally happens, and let's just use negative three for our example. If you put 100 pounds in a bank at the start of a year with a negative three interest rate per year, what that means is by the end of the year, your 100 pounds is worth 97 pounds. So you're gonna to say to me, but Samuel, how does my 100 pounds become 97 pounds? I still withdraw 100 pounds. Yes, you still withdraw 100 pounds, but the world has increased its prices by literally three pound per every 100 pound. So for example, you might have started putting that 100 pounds in the bank with the price of bread costing one pound. But then by the end of the year, the price of bread costs one pound three P. And because your money is still just a hundred pounds, what you've seen is that there is an inflation in prices, even though your money hasn't inflated. Now, if you add on the interest that you would have got on your hundred pounds, let's say it's a 0.01%, which literally is nothing, but let's just say it was one P. You now have a hundred pounds and one P but the loaf of bread has gone up by three pence. So for every one pound, it's increased by three pound. And you can very quickly start to do the maths and realize that your hundred pounds is literally being murdered. It's, it's dying a slow death and it's literally being murdered. Or as I said a moment ago, it's rotting. So the question you should be asking yourself right now is, okay, so Samuel, what are these four alternatives that I should be using instead of a bank? Now, I'm gonna give you the first one right now. The first one is your own property deals. Now, obviously, I am interested in property. I invest in property. I coach people on property investment. So what do you think I'm going to say for number one? Now, the reason I'm saying invest in property is not because I like property and I think it's a great thing. No, it's because if you go to any first world nation and look at the Forbes 100, Forbes 400 list, the Times 100, any of those kind of lists in any of these, what they call first world nations, you will find out overwhelming majority, between 50 and 70% of the people in that list have either created or retained their wealth in property, in real estate. So I would advocate that the first thing you do is put your money into your own property deals. Now, one of the things that's interesting is even people that don't know what they're doing, which is the large majority of people who invest in property, they generate between a two to 6% return on investment. So what that means is that same 100 pounds, for every 100 pounds, they, a person who doesn't know what they're doing, put into property, they are generally gonna be able to make between two to six pounds on every 100 pounds they're creating. Now, at the 2% level, no, they're not beating inflation. At the 6% level, yes, they're barely beating inflation. Here's the great thing. If you know what you're doing in property, you can literally achieve returns on investment like 15, 16, 17% and beyond, but you have to know what you're doing. But even if you don't know what you're doing, it's better than the 0.01% you're getting in the bag don't use a bank when you can use your own property deals. The second alternative where I believe you should be putting your money instead of inside of a bank is in other people's property deals. 
Now you're going to be saying to yourself, well, Sam, you're holding a minute, other people's property deals. How do I do that? Well, you literally do that through means of partnering. You find other people who are doing property deals, ideally very successfully, and you put your money into their deals in exchange for your money back after a period of time, plus a beneficial, mutually beneficial return. Now, here's an interesting way to set this up, okay? There are people that run what we call an earn and learn structure. An earn and learn structure is so amazing because it allows you to earn interest, earn a return on the money you deploy into other people's property deals, but also those people will allow you to come and learn what they're doing in those property deals. Now, the reason why this is so fantastic is because you don't only end up with your money back after a period of time, plus a interest after that period of time, you also end up with an education. You will have insights into how they've used your money to create more money and literally turn your money soldier into a soldier that goes out, fights, comes back with spoils. I want you to understand that the reality of war when you are a soldier is I'm gonna do this thing so that my country doesn't have to do this thing, okay? And I'm sure we've all heard the quote, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. So let's go deeper into number three. Now, number three is highly connected with the earn and learn structure, which I spoke about a moment ago. For number three, you should put your money into your real education, okay? Now, when I say your real education, I'm a person who studied four higher level degrees, okay? I studied a BSc in computing and statistics. I studied a MSc in statistics. I studied a um, PGCE, postgraduate certificate in education in secondary and A-level mathematics. And then I studied the MTeach, a master's in teaching, all right? And all of those four degrees, let me tell you something, they were not my real education. I'm just gonna be really honest with you. They were not my real education. Now I know some of you are saying, well, Samuel, you studied four degrees, you know, how, how could you say that's not your real education? Well, let me explain, okay? 300 years ago, there was no such thing as the conventional school system we see today. And most of what we have today was built on the back of the things, the accomplishments of two, 300 years ago. So how does that work? Well, the way it works is because years ago, the way you would be educated is literally if your dad was a carpenter, whilst he goes to the carpentry shop, you'd be going to the carpentry shop. And whilst he goes there and touches the wood and fills the wood and talks about the wood, you will pick up and learn about the wood. And as he talks to his clients about how he's gonna make them a chair or how he's gonna make them a door, you'll hear how he's talking about how he's gonna make a chair, how he's gonna make a door. And through that process, you know, what they say is repetition is the mother of learning. I give that one to Zig Ziglar, who I heard that from first. Through that process, you start to see exactly how you are gonna become a carpenter. Now. The great thing about the day and age we live in today is if your dad's a carpenter, you don't have to become a carpenter. You can go and find a property investor, like I said, in the second alternative and jump into an earn and learn and literally earn whilst you learn. And over time of learning, that repetition being the mother of learning, you can learn how to become exactly what you want to become. It doesn't have to be a carpenter today. You can become a banker. You can become a solicitor. You can become anything you want by literally shadowing and following someone who's winning in the space you want to win. And this is the reason why I share with my friends all the single time that I talk to them that coaching is the fastest path to success because that's literally what your dad would have been doing as a carpenter teaching you carpentry all those two, 300 years ago. So the third alternative is invest in your real education. So when I'm talking about your real education, I'm talking about the education that determines where you really want to go, okay? Not the education that you just do because your mom and dad told you to do, not the education that you've just been doing because your boss at work tells you to do, not the CPD credits so you can say, oh, look, I'm worthy of the promotion that they might still not even give to you just because the way you come to work in a dress that they don't approve of and all of this other crazy stuff which they use as the barometer to make decisions but the reality is there is a real education that you should be investing yourself in now one of the examples i give for this which i think is very important is about when i got married to my wife you see the reality is out there in the world there is no manual for a successful marriage okay there's lots of books that 
human beings, individuals have written, but there's no real manual. You don't go to the registry and say, listen, I need to get married. I want the training course. There is no training course unless you invest in your real education. Go find that training course. Go find a husband and wife who are doing it successfully and have said, look, we're going to write a book or have said, look, we're going to run a course. I have said, listen, we're going to coach you. We're going to mentor you. We're going to help you so you can have a successful marriage too. So it's exactly the same in the property investment world. Go out there, find someone who can support you, who can teach you, who can develop you. Now, this doesn't have to be property for you. This could be anything for you. But for me, this is what I did in terms of property. This is how I ended up on what many people call high ticket programs, paying over £10,000 to different people in order for them to train me so I could be more successful in my property investment journey by investing in my education. Now, the fourth alternative beside the bank listen let me tell you something this for me is probably one of the greatest places i would advocate everybody to place their money invest in your offspring's education i'm going to say that one more time invest in your offspring's education now many of you know that i used to work in schools i used to be a secondary and a level math teacher and then i became a teacher trainer and even more of you may know that my wife also used to work in the conventional schooling system and one of the things we learned the most is that you cannot rely on anyone else to educate your offspring. Now, when I'm talking about your offspring, I'm not just talking about your children. For me, yes, that might be my children, but I'm talking to you about the people that you want to carry the torch that you are going to be passing to them. I'm talking about your nephews, your nieces, your friends, your family, whoever it is that you would say to yourself, look, when I'm gone and listen, let me tell you something. Here's a secret. There's going to be a day when you're gone, when we're gone you want people to live on and you don't want them to have to struggle the way you struggled and even if you're fairly affluent you don't want them to struggle the way you've struggled and the only way you can guarantee they don't struggle the way you've struggled is not by how much money you give them it's not by how much money you shove in front of their face and say look i had all of this in the bank and now it's for you it's literally by the education you invest into them and the reason I'm saying this is because statistically it's been proven that many people who win the national lottery within five to 10 years after them winning, they are in the same or a worse financial space. And what that literally shows us is that all the money without the education about the money literally leads to something which isn't funny. So with that being said, guys, I'm gonna love you, I'm gonna leave you, and I'm gonna remind you that it's small keys that open big doors. Use these four alternatives and change your life. This is Sammy I Can Win. I'm signing out. And go watch this video right here. It's going to help you move further faster in your future. Good day. God bless. And I'll see you next time.